So in the last video, we went through the process of planning out a walk cycle and getting the key poses drawn, the most extreme points of the contact, the low, the passing, and the high pose. So now we're going to dive into the in-betweening to get the real fluidity of the cycle that we're looking for. So the in-betweening is that grunt work and it also requires a fair bit of thinking. Let's add a frame in there, particularly because with this timing, we're not just doing halves halves, right? We're not just dividing the space in half. We're actually dividing it into thirds because we have two in-betweens that need to fit between number one and number four. So um, you sort of have to do some mental gymnastics to figure that out. Let's turn this one blue. Uh, we have our, our guide mark for where the heel is gonna be. And we're sort of looking at, okay, you know, how is this leg gonna start to bend into that position? You just gotta kind of feel it out. Now with the body, you can just eyeballing the in-betweens here. And it's pretty subtle. I might wanna zoom in a little bit more. Help you get more precise with the line work. So I'm just sort of cheating it towards the outer edge of the red, which is drawing number one here. And then when we go and do the next in-between, then we can actually go halves, halves. Uh, so let's go this way. And let's look down at this other leg here. So to get this leg swinging, again, I'm looking for the arc of the knee and trying to take this front edge and divide that space into thirds. So on this drawing, I'm gonna go here and on the next drawing, I'm gonna go right here. Um, and then I can kind of make everything else fall into place. All right, so let's see what we've got here. So this is the sort of fluidity that we want between these frames here. Now we have to go back and we have to do the rest of the in-betweening. Um, so that's number two, here's number three. We got number four, and so we've got to put two more in between four and seven. And this is why having this um, color thing can be really great because if these were not colored, what a mess that would be, right? So um, let's just make sure that we're making sense of this here. Uh, we've got this leg coming forward, the right leg is coming forward, and there it is on the blue side. So if we are doing one third of that, we sort of wanna be around here. Again, looking for the arc of the knee. It's gonna be down to here. And once I have that arc defined, that really helps me put in the bottom half of the leg. Same thing here, what's going on here? The foot is still sliding back. We get that really nice connection to the ground. It's starting to go behind this right leg here. One more frame. Now we can go just right in the middle, right? Because we're just dividing that last space in half. So we 
we've made it to the passing pose here and we still have four more in-betweens that we need to do right between the high point and the next contact. And um, so we can kind of whip those out and then we will have a full step. So here's one thing to note, I'm on drawing number 11 and we're in betweening between the high pose and the contact pose and this is when the front leg is swinging forward and it needs to kind of like kick out and straighten out to get to that point of contact. As I'm animating this, the arc of the upper thigh is going to sort of change a little bit while the arc of the lower calf is going to keep moving in this direction. So this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky just because there's so many different moving parts and they're moving at different uh, rates with different arcs, right? So you really got to kind of keep in mind, I think it's best to sort of like start from the pivot point and work your way down. Okay, so we have one full step now and it needs a little bit of cleanup to be sure. I think the uh, position of the knee is probably jumping around quite a bit. Probably need to clean up those arcs somewhat. But if we loop this, then we can get a little bit of a sense of how it looks. Not too bad, okay, so this is only halfway. You can see that it sort of like pops um, as we go back, but uh, we will fix that when we trace over. One thing that's like working really well, you look at this nice consistent slide of the foot going back and we have this up and down movement of the body. I can see a little bit of inconsistency in the length of the limbs so I need to go back and fix that and probably better to do it at this stage rather than when I trace the other half okay so I'm gonna do something called plotting the arcs and this is a good way to make sure that you have consistency in the limbs of your character So I'm gonna pull up my guide layer here. In fact, maybe I'll just make a new layer. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a color that really stands out and I'm going to start with this right leg here and I'm just going to put a mark at the knee and I think I'll also probably put one at the hip joint just for fun. So we're just going to go one frame at a time on that same layer put a mark right at that spot. 
I think I might leave off the hips for now. Let's just focus on the knee. What we're looking for is a is a smooth arc that connects these dots. So you can see here, I'm a little bit off on these ones here. It should be a little bit more out. And then we have this, I think it went like this, and back down to here. So like this sort of thing is okay, but these ones here that don't really connect, and you can see maybe a little bit like in here, um, if we don't have this smooth arc, that's an indication that the length of the limbs is a little bit off. And so I'm going to go find those frames. So let's take a look first of all here, there, it's okay. Ah, I see, I, uh, I misdrew this one. So this one actually is going up here and connecting to that. So actually that's not too, too bad. What you do see here is uh, the variation in the spacing, right? So we have um, a pretty even swing here, and then it speeds up as it goes through. That makes sense. It's a pendulum, right? And then we've got this little bit of easing happening up here. Um, and so that gives us this kind of nice pendulum swing of the leg. So one thing I do want to check is I do want to go back and check that hip joint. And you know, if we were to actually connect these, we would hopefully see that they're about the same length which actually looks like it's kind of like a little bit shorter there. So maybe this one needs to be up. Hmm, and this one might be just a little bit too long. So let's perhaps give it a little bit less overlap there, get the hip down there, perhaps same thing happening here, just a little bit too much. Have to take note that the body is moving up, so there is going to be some of that upward movement. And I'm starting to see that nice arc come through, right? That's what we're looking for. So it seems like there was a pretty big jump there, but I think that was intentional on my part because I wanted this last drawing before the contact to be feel like it was kind of dropping heavily and then we get back to the first contact there so I can see in my arc like it's a little bit flat right there maybe it needs to be a little more of a circle how would I fix that let's see
we have half of our walk cycle so far and really the thinking is done. So now it's just a matter of kind of figuring out which frame corresponds to the to the next one and not getting them confused as you trace. I'm going to make all of my first step red. Okay. And now we've already traced the contact, right? Number 13 and number 1 same just different foot forward and then we've already also done number 19 and that's number seven here's number seven 19 seven okay so now what we can do is we can go and duplicate all of these we're going to turn on onion skinning here um, turn off the frame after we don't need it and so if this is number two that corresponds with number 14 right number two number 14 so make sure that when you start drawing number 14 you label it so we don't get confused and then you can just go ahead and trace it and then when it comes to the legs that's where that's where we need to bring our brains back just so we don't forget and do the exact same drawing right so these legs they need to be switched so now the right leg is in the front the left leg is in the back and that's where the shading comes in also because as you're tracing you think okay well this one's shaded so in my new drawing the opposite one needs to be shaded right so once you have that traced you definitely want to pick it up and put it where it belongs it belongs right there right so now we have drawing number 13 and drawing number 14 and so we can add a new one here so now we're on drawing number 15 and again, less thinking at this point, but don't forget to switch those legs. Okay, so now you just wanna keep on doing that. It's gonna take a little while, but most of the hard thinking is done. So once we've got that done, um, then we will move on to arms and overlapping action.